Okay, uh, let's welcome Mariano Chevar. He's going to talk about S logarithmic foliations. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you, uh, all the organizers, for organizing this. Uh, it's my first time here in IMPA and also speaking, so uh, it's uh, really a honor to be here. And also, I'd like to congratulate Fernando for his birthday. I'm really glad to be here celebrating. Uh, I, I am a PhD student of him, and what I'll be speaking about is the, the thesis that he directed for me. So thank you once again for that. So let's start uh, with the talk. Uh, the talk is called S Logarithmic Foliations. It will be divided essentially in three parts. First, first I'm going to have a small introduction making uh, known facts about foliations, but it will also direct the motivation of the S logarithmic foliations, which we, will be the main uh, focus of our talk. Uh, so uh, then we are going to talk about uh, definitions and generalities of, of this type of foliations on the projective space. And then we are, we are going to say some stuff about geometry and stability of this uh, type of foliations. So let's jump right into the introduction. Uh, I'll skip this uh, not very deeply because uh, it's some introduction. So uh, what we were, are going to study in this talk is uh, holomorphic or algebraic foliations of codimension one in the complex projective space, which I'm not going to write the C uh, here uh, after. Uh, what is a holomorphic foliation of codimension one? Well, it can be represented by a, a differential one form. Uh, so you can write it as uh, this uh, combination of uh, homogeneous polynomials uh, with those dxy's, dxi's, and we will have to impose some conditions to this one form to define a foliation on the projective space, which is uh, we will get homogeneous polynomials. It has to satisfy the descent condition, which is that that polynomial equation over there, and also the Frobenius integrability condition for it to be a foliation, which are a list of quadratic equations. And the space that we study generally is this moduli space of codimension one foliations, which are essentially uh, these, uh, these guys, the projective uh, differential forms that uh, satisfy uh, the Frobenius integrability condition and that have non-common uh, divisors uh, so uh, one of the main problems associated to this moduli space of foliations is the stability problem, which is essentially uh, understanding the uh, irreducible components of this space. So I'm going to give one example that will be useful for S logarithmic foliations, which are logarithmic foliations. Uh, essentially, a logarithmic foliation is a foliation defined by a logarithmic form. So let's uh, fix an integer partition of this number d. Um, d is the degree of the differential form, not the degree of defoliation. Uh, so let's fix this uh, degree of uh, differential form and an integer partition. And using this integer partition, we're going to pick uh, distinct homogeneous and irreducible polynomials of those uh, degrees, di. Uh, yeah, there. And uh, using those polynomials, we're going to build this logarithmic form, which of course has, has some poles. So we multiply by the product to eliminate those poles. And uh, with this uh, logarithmic uh, form, we define uh, foliation. It has to satisfy the descent condition, but uh, it naturally uh, satisfies the Frobenius integrability condition. So this defines foliation and the set of all the logarithmic uh, differential one forms are uh, what we call the logarithmic component and uh, it's called a logarithmic component because it's an irreducible component of the space of foliations and the common thing that they have is that uh, if you divide if you cancel out this term of the product of the polynomials you get a closed form okay because this dfi over fi is like d log fi. So when you differentiate that, you get zero. So what do they have in common? They have 
this uh, property that I just said, which is having an integrating factor, which is uh, this product of polynomials. So uh, when you have a differential one form, we call an integrating factor oops, uh, to this uh, f, which can be a polynomial, but also can be a quotient of polynomials, such that when you differentiate this quotient, you get zero. Okay, so all uh, logarithmic forms uh, have an integrating factor, which is indeed a polynomial with a certain irreducible decomposition. And the thing is that uh, the logarithmic components are characterized by this. Uh, that is, uh, the logarithmic component is the closure of the set of uh, forms having an integrating factor and the partition uh, the integer partition that we fixed before uh, uh, says which are the degrees of the irreducible parts of the irreducible decomposition of the polynomial integrating factor, okay? So logarithmic forms are the ones that have a polynomial integrating factor. Uh, so let's get back to what are the irreducible components. Uh, for small degrees, uh, this question has been answered by Joan Lou first. Uh, in the degrees uh, 2 and 3, remember that this is the degree of the differential form, not of the foliation. Joan Lou characterized all these irreducible components and they were all logarithmic components. Usually when there are two polynomials instead of R polynomials, they are called rational uh, uh, components, but they are the same thing. And there's uh, this famous paper of Servo and Linz Neto where they characterized uh, the components for d equals four. Um, there were uh, exactly six, four of which were logarithmic. One is uh, called of pullback type. Essentially, you take a, a form on the projective space of a projective surface and you uh, lift it using linear projections. But also they found one last uh, component that raised uh, in a different fashion, which is called this exceptional component, which I'm going to describe really briefly. Uh, the exceptional component was the, this last uh, irreducible component, which was formed essentially in a weird fashion, uh, or, or at least this is how I'm going to describe it. Uh, you form a logarithmic differential one form of degree five, not four as we mentioned, but five. And you use two specific polynomials. And these polynomials are built, are built in such a way that uh, if you construct this, uh, this uh, differential one form, what you get is that you don't get a foliation because the singular locus doesn't have co-dimension two or more. It has uh, a content that is uh, co-dimension one singular locus. So what you do, as you get this common factor, uh, I chose x0, but it can be other, you can cancel it out, and then you get a uh, foliation of a smaller degree. It was five, now we cancel out this linear, so we get degree four. And what you do with this specific form is you uh, change coordinates, and you also lift to, to projective space of general dimension, and all these uh, forms grouped uh, form an irreducible component, which is this exceptional component. So there's this weird procedure where you get a logarithmic form of a specific type. You get it such that you get some content or some common factor and you cancel it out and you get a component. Uh, so uh, in 2021, uh, in this paper by uh, Jorge, uh, Ruben and Rafael. Uh, they got uh, in the classification of foliations of degree uh, three, which is forms of degree five. They got these other uh, special logarithmic components, which are also S logarithmic in some sense. Uh, and they made uh, some similar construction to this, which was uh, the following. I'm going to, to tell a bit about the case two five. Uh, they got a degree two polynomial that I wrote there. Um, there is it. And uh, they try to seek polynomials of degree five. 
such that the corresponding logarithmic form is divisible by a linear polynomial squared. So when you impose these conditions, you get, once again, uh, a singular affiliation with content, with a common factor x0 squared. So they cancel it out, and with this uh, procedure, they got another irreducible component, okay? So there are logarithmic foliations, and there's this weird procedure that appeared like three times here, which is we impose that they get some content, some common factor in the differential one form, and we cancel it out, and we get uh, an irreducible component of the space of foliations. So the natural question that arises to understand better this weird thing is can we obtain new irreducible components of the space of foliations by canceling the content of certain foliations with content, uh, specifically logarithmic? Uh, and also the exceptional component uh, rises uh, in the classification as some exceptional thing. So can we uh, wrap it up in inside of a large uh, list or collection of components of the space of foliations? The answer is yes, and the answer is the S logarithmic foliations, which I'm going to speak about now. So we'll start with general definitions on what are S logarithmic foliations. Uh, as we spoke before, the, the um, logarithmic foliations are characterized by having a polynomial integrating factor. This uh, S logarithmic foliations have a rational integrating factor with a certain decomposition. So uh, you get a natural number, which will be the power of the linear form, uh, which you will cancel out. And you get an integer partition, which will be the irreducible decomposition of the uh, polynomial part. So uh, we define the S logarithmic foliations of type D and 1 to the power of m. This 1 is the degree of this H linear polynomial. As the Sarisky closure of that set, so in some sense, what we got is that D of omega over uh, this thing is equal to zero. So this thing over here is the rational or quotient of polynomials integrating factor of this thing. So it's kind of a generalization of the logarithmic proposition slash definition. And also another thing that is worth mentioning is that when you get that expression, omega times h to the power of m has a polynomial integrating factor, so it's logarithmic, okay? So uh, this omega arises from getting a specific logarithmic form and canceling out a linear uh, polynomial to the power of m. So one example, like 2, 3, and canceling a linear thing, this is the exceptional component. And the special logarithmic components that we got before are an example of this. It's uh, 2, 5, and you cancel a squared linear polynomial. OK? So this is some sort of generalization of all these examples that were isolated in the literature in some sense. Uh, so what was the main result that we've got in this work is that some of these uh, guys are uh, in fact irreducible components. So what we get is that uh, if we get a rational foliation, that is uh, logarithmic with two polynomials of the degrees k and k plus one, uh, and we cancel out a linear polynomial, we get an irreducible and generically reduced component of the moduli space of foliations. Okay? So this is the, the main result that we've got. These are the new infinite collection of, of components. So uh, in order to, to try to understand these S logarithmic foliations, the first thing that we want to do is try to understand which are all the members, like parameterize it, so in that sense, we're going to define 
uh, this object, which will be the domain of the parametrization. We call it uh, the division space. Um, so you take an irreducible subset of the space of foliations. Imagine that that x is uh, uh, the space of logarithmic foliations to fix ideas. So the division space is a couple. First, you get a linear polynomial, and then you get um, a differential one form. And it's uh, an incidence correspondence in some way. The linear polynomial should, to the power of m, should divide the uh, differential one form. Uh, this thing naturally has two projections, one to the polynomial, linear polynomial and the other one to the uh, space of forms. Uh, and this thing is built on purpose to have this division morphism, which essentially does the corresponding division. Uh, you divide the differential one form by the linear polynomial to the power of m. We're going to focus on the case where this is a logarithmic component, okay? So uh, how can we describe this division space? Well, uh, notice that one of the projections is uh, under the linear uh, polynomials. So uh, this is a homogeneous uh, with respect to the changes of coordinates, projective changes of coordinates. And uh, this is uh, transitive. So when you try to, to understand this division space, you have this action, so it's to, uh, to describe it, you have to take just one fiber, act with these changes of coordinates, and then factor out by the stabilizer group of this. I chose the linear guy to be x0 because it's the first variable, but it's the same thing. So uh, now the idea is to understand this division space because it's going to be some sort of parametrization of this logarithmic S logarithmic components. So in this formula, the weirdest thing that we have to understand is this fiber. What is this fiber? Well, it's not, uh, it's quite simple. It's just the, the, the forms omega such that x0 to the power of m divides omega, okay? So we want to impose conditions on that omega, which will be logarithmic, for x0 to the power of m to divide omega. Uh, so if you see once again this definition, I added uh, in the logarithmic uh, components, it's the same thing, the fact that h and LFI should be irreducibly distinct. So I'm going to focus on a specific subset of this division space, which will be when omega is a logarithmic form of a specific type, and also when uh, x0 does not divide any of these polynomials so that they all are co-prime. So the main question is right there. So how can we get conditions on the omega or the uh, polynomials fi for that division to happen. So these are quite involved computations, but I can get a sketch of the idea involved here. I'm going to use si as the homogeneous polynomials on all the variables from x0 to xn, and then ti uh, excluding x0 from x1 to xn. So what I'm going to do is try to make a Taylor expansion centered on x0. So the first thing that I get is the Taylor expansion of the fi's. Okay, these fij's are the, the, the coefficients on the Taylor expansion centered on x0. And also remember that x0 cannot divide fi, so x0 won't divide this product, so it should divide this first part, okay? This can be imposed having fi zeros to be different than zero. Okay, so how can we make x0 to the power of m to divide that uh, logarithmic form, which it has some sort of division by a polynomial, so it doesn't make 
sense at first, but if you check uh, properly, when you make this expansion, you get fi0 plus x0 and higher, higher terms. So the main problem there is that we get a 1 over fi, OK? But the thing is that when you write 1 over fi, you plug in this expansion that I've got here. So what you can do is factor out this fi0. And you get a geometric series. All right? So if you allow the coefficients to have denominators fi0, you can make this expansion, OK, on a Taylor series centered on x0. And for this, we use letters j, g, i, j, OK? Remember that this g, i, j can have some denominators, but there's no problem with that. So now I can expand 1 over fi, and then lambda i dfi can also be expanded in this fashion. And how can we make x0 to the power of m to divide this Taylor series? We just got to annihilate the first m terms in this expansion. So when you make these uh, tough computations, you get uh, this result. Uh, notice that uh, for omega to be divisible by x0 to the power of m, you have to impose these uh, conditions. The first one looks like some sort of logarithmic form, but centered on, uh, but, but instead of using the, the capital letter fi's, use the small fi's, the initial fi's. And then you get other equations, which in general are hard, but, but we're going to focus on a specific case for now. So with this in mind, uh, we could describe uh, really concretely the logarithmic division space, or at least one fiber, which is the same thing. And with that, we're going to talk about the geometry of these S-logarithmic foliations. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is uh, have a parametrization, computes the dimension, etc. So remember that we have a really specific case. Here, d is equal to k, k plus 1. It's a partition into 2. And look that we've got uh, lots of sub-indices. So now we're going to focus uh, the notation to use f and g instead of f1 and f2 and fj and gj instead of two sub-indices. And uh, when we plug in all this notation, we get that the, the rational or logarithmic foliation has this specific form, k plus 1 gdf minus kf dg. Okay? So this will be the logarithmic form that we will cancel out the, the linear factor. Uh, so we call f as this uh, linear uh, expansion, this uh, Taylor expansion centered on x0. And for g, we have the same linear expansion, uh, Taylor expansion, sorry. And uh, we obtain uh, using the previous uh, equations that we obtain here, the specific conditions for uh, this uh, logarithmic form to be divisible by x0. And they are the following. The two initial parts should form this sort of cusp, L0 to the power of k and L0 to the power of k plus 1, where L0 is a linear form. And also, there should be uh, uh, a specific equation uh, relating the linear part of f and the linear part of g, OK? No. It's the, the part accompanying x0. So imposing these things makes omega to be divisible by x0. So with this in mind, we can parameterize the, the s logarithmic foliations. For this, f0, g0, and g1 are fixed with those equations. And we 
keep free all the other uh, polynomials involved in the Taylor series of f and g. Using that, what we will do is uh, quite simple. Uh, you get this L0 and all the polynomials f1 to fk and g2 to gk plus 1. With those guys, we're going to build f0, g0, and g1 in that way. And with that, we will build f and g using these expressions, these Taylor expressions. Okay? So this first morphism just builds f and g to construct the logarithmic foliation. Uh, so now that we got f and g, uh, th this is something that should be uh, projective. So we have uh, some actions in the domain and codomain. So we have to factor out by this equivariant action. But after this, we start with this L0, f and g. We take polynomials f and g, then we build the logarithmic foliation, and then what we're going to do is cancel out the content, which is this linear form x0, OK? So with this in mind, we can build the parametrization of the s logarithmic forms of this specific type, k, k plus 1, and factoring out a linear part as a specific rational map. What we will do is what I told you recently. Uh, have, you have L0, uh, all the f coefficients and all the g coefficients. You build f and g, you build omega, and you factor out x0, OK? Great. So with this in mind, we have a rational parametrization of these s logarithmic components. So this, uh, this set, this algebraic set, is unirational. There you have the, the, rational, the rational dominating uh, algebraic variety. And also, we can uh, study a bit about its geometry using this uh, parametrization. Uh, for instance, we can calculate the dimension. It's a really simple thing. Uh, PGL n plus 1 and P have uh, specific dimensions. And x prime is just a small quotient of a sum of, linear, of polynomials. So it's quite easy to, to compute the dimension. Uh, you sum with the product and you subtract with the quotient. So we get uh, uh, parametri that the parametrization here is generically injective, so we can compute the dimension as the dimension of the domain. OK? Um, one extra thing to consider, uh, the exceptional component has some specific property, which is it is rigid. Uh, that is, you just get one, uh, one differential, one form, and you act by the group of of changes of coordinates, and you obtain all the other elements in the component. Uh, this computation uh, says that this is not the case in general, because this number grows really fast, actually. So you can't obtain all, the, all these uh, S logarithmic foliations only by acting with the changes of coordinates, OK? Uh, so. Uh, We've got uh, some properties like it's unirational, the S logarithmic foliations, its dimension. We also can get information on the uh, singular locus. Um, the singular uh, locus has some special part that we focus on to study, which is uh, the Kupka part of the singular locus. So let's say what is the, the Kupka part of the singular locus. Uh, let's fix one element uh, x on the projective space. What is a Kupka type singular point of, of one differential one form? Uh, well, it's a, a point where the, the differential form vanishes. That is a singular point. But also where the differential of this form is not 0, OK? Uh, so there are these Kupka type singular points. And we have a very important part of the, of the foliations, which is the Kupka set, 
which are all the Kupka type singular points. Okay? Um, yeah, uh, I want to say something else. No, okay. So, um, in our case, uh, the Kupka type singular points can be characterized uh, really easy. Um, uh, one thing I want to clarify, I'm using omega tilde to refer to omega divided by x0. So the S logarithmic foliation is omega tilde, and omega is the logarithmic initial form. Okay. So what, uh, how can we describe this Kupka set? Well, in our case, uh, it has uh, some nice picture. If you get an S logarithmic uh, foliation of this type, um, the, the Kupka set is formed by three varieties. One is a linear, uh, a linear of co dimension two. The other one is a flat section of a hypersurface and it's got degree 2k minus 2. And the third one is, uh, is uh, arithmetically Cohen Macaulay. It's defined by an LDL, by an LDL with a resolution of length 2. It's not a complete intersection, but close enough. And uh, a specific case is the exceptional component where this picture is quite nice. Uh, for instance, let's fix P3, the projective space of, of dimension three. Here, this uh, linear co-dimension two thing is a line. Here on C2, uh, we get a flat section of a hypersurface of degree uh, two. That, this is a conic. And here on C3, we get uh, the intersection of three quadrics which is a, a twisted cubic curve. And... Uh, what do you mean by a flat section? Oh, it's formed by a polynomial of that degree and then one linear equation, those two equations. That's it. So uh, in P3, you have a line, a conic, and also a twisted cubic. And there are some uh, sort of intersection uh, things that are cool here. For instance, that line is a, a tangent line to that twisted cubic in one point. And that conic has some properties with respect to this twisted cubic. It's the osculating uh, thing, uh, which is uh, some cool picture that uh, happens on the exceptional component and generalizes to this specific case. I think it's really nice. Um, so yeah, I think uh, this is a good overview of the geometry uh, of the S logarithmic foliations. We got uh, unirrationality, we got uh, dimension, a description of singular locus. And yeah, the main theorem, as I told you before, was uh, to to get that these uh, sets are indeed irreducible components of the space of foliations. And the way that we get this is using the lemma that Cesar exposed uh, today in the morning. So uh, when you got this uh, integer partition, uh, you can use this sigma parametrization of our, of our S logarithmic foliation and take the derivative, the Zariski derivative. And the main idea to prove the stability will be to prove that this uh, Zariski derivative is going to be uh, generically sub subjective. That is, we take a uh, generic guy in the domain of sigma, and we compute the Zariski derivative, and we see that for a generic guy, this uh, Zariski derivative is surjective. OK? Um, this, using the lemma we exposed before, uh, will be uh, will have as a consequence 
the stability of all this uh, infinite collection of, of irreducible components now. And yeah, I, this is a really extensive uh, computationally uh, theorem. Uh, so I'm not going to explain it deeply. I'm just going to point out a simple fact. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is compute uh, both tangent spaces. First, the tangent space to the domain of sigma, and then the tangent space to the space of foliations. Uh, the tangent space to the space of foliations can be characterized by this equation, d eta times omega plus eta wedge d omega equals zero. I think you spoke about this a bit. But the thing here is that if we restrict this equation to the Kupka set, which in our case will be formed by these three components. We get that since it's a part of a singular locus, this will vanish, okay? So in some sense, what we have to do is the following. First of all, we gotta uh, compute the Sariski derivative and then we have to see that every guy here belongs to the image of this Sariski derivative, which is computed explicitly there. And in order to see that, we need to understand these guys. And for that, we can use this equation here, okay? And in order to, to see how this tangent vector eta is described, we can uh, use this equation and try to uh, lift it, okay? So in some sense, this is uh, the zeros of some complex, and we want to understand uh, what we is the cohomology of that complex in order to lift that uh, tangent vector. Uh, for this, there's a, a lemma, which was, for instance, involved in the in the stability of the, of the logarithmic or rational components, which is called the, the Ram-Saito lemma, uh, which is uh, on that article by Saito. And the thing is that here we need to adapt this the Ram-Saito lemma to our situation. Uh, this uh, the Ram-Saito lemma says something like, in our case, if eta wedge df wedge dg is equal to zero inside this place, then eta is a combination of df and dg on a proper varieties. In our case, f and g are not chosen generic. They have uh, specific conditions. So this, uh, the Ramsay lemma is not satisfied. The cohomology of the the Ram Saito complex, it's not zero, but uh, the main computation that we did was compute explicitly the cohomology, uh, the cohomology of this, the Ram Saito complex. These are the zeros, and these are the borders. And when you compute the, the Ram Saito uh, cohomology, you get uh, that is uh, generated by an explicit element that uh, arises from omega. And these are hard computations, so I don't want to focus on that. But yeah, I wanted to say that uh, in order to, to prove this theorem, the main ingredient is this uh, adaptation of the, the ram saito lemma, okay? Because we need that. So this is the the main theorem. We got new irreducible components of the space of foliations in projective spaces, generalizing the ex uh, exceptional component and the special logarithmic 
uh, ones. Uh, maybe you want to know why are they called S logarithmic? What is the S standing for? Logarithmic. Well, uh, they are uh, they are a special a special case of the S logarithmic components. Are the special logarithmic components that we found in the literature? And also, what we are doing in some sense is we are getting a non-saturated uh, ideal, and by factoring out the content, we are saturating in some sense. So what in common between special and saturation? The S. So we get S logarithmic components, OK? Uh, also Saito, good one. I, I can add that for the next. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is uh, the talk, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Questions? So you, you, you put this as a stability condition, right? So, but there is also this topological stability condition, which would mean that uh, you also mentioned that in, in a particular case, you had the two objects in this uh, variety were biholomorphically equivalent. But you can also have homeomorphic equivalence. So uh, in the case of logarithmic foliations, the principal thing is that you have these divisors, the fi equal to zero, and then you have a log a, like logarithmic behavior around this, this, this component. So for these components that you just uh, described, do you have a, a topological description of what the foliations are doing? Actually, no. Uh, all the computations are really algebraic, so I don't know how can we adapt it to that part. And yeah, as these are really specific logarithmic uh, foliations, as f and g are non-generic at all, uh, maybe this uh, topological description needs some refinement. But yeah, I don't know the answer to that, sorry. <laughs> Anyone has a question? Uh, Mariano, do you know what happened in, in a more general case? I mean, for S logarithmic variations uh, greater than a rational you, you one. You mean like D one to the power of M, something like this. Or say, what parameters in that description you can yeah, generalize yeah. in order to obtain? That's a general. good question. It's not true that all of the S logarithmic foliations are indeed components. You have very specific examples. For instance, uh, if one divides the other, you don't get stability at all, for instance, as an example. But I think uh, I have some conjectures uh, on what could be candidates to be uh, new families of foliations, including the, especially the special logarithmic ones, which I did not include in this uh, stability thing. But yeah, I have some, some idea. I think it's uh, m, 2m, sorry, k, mk plus 1. 1 to the power of m. I have the feeling that this could be uh, components, but. This is also rational, right? Yeah, this is also rational. Do you have a, an example of a logarithmic one in mind? No, no. Uh, I, I had a hard time enough proving this. Okay. This should be even harder. And, okay, okay. But yeah, it's a good question, uh, maybe. With more, OK, so I'm going to take a deeper look there. So yeah, uh, open question. I, I don't know, actually. But I have the feeling that those could also be components. And well, the, the special ones are with m equals 2, something like this, right? Okay. So. And another one, do you have any description of that uh, division space in a more general case? 
the thing is that uh, these uh, computations are really specific to the case one to the power of m. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, what you're asking essentially is, can you describe all the components that have uh, a no, generic I... element uh, that is uh, completely integral? Something. This, this your question is kind of related to this one. It's okay. kind of an ambitious question, but yeah, we can try to attack yeah, it. I don't know. Ah, uh, okay, right, You're right. Yeah, it's quite uh, similar your question, and yeah, this is good for classification in general, but. I think that question is hard. Yeah. To describe that fiber that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would describe general S logarithmic foliations and general uh, components with a uh, generic element having an integrating factor. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 completely integral. Okay, even in the case that when they are logarithmic, you said that it's very general. Even when they are logarithmic, because you, when in your description, you have a connection with. I mean, with something like the base locus of the of the yeah. pa parametrization uh, of the logarithmic foliations, is this connection? Or? I don't know if that connection is for general thing. When okay. you divide by a linear thing, it appears. Okay. But in general, I I'm not sure. You that, have to make that computation. Okay. It's kind of hard. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, I have a question. So these are irreducible components of the space of codimension one foliations in Pn. Yes. This n should be greater or equal than two, three, four. Uh, it's a, well in P two, uh, you yeah. it's solved. But for three and more, you have all this. It's independent of n of the projective space. So in this case of uh, Another way to produce uh, this logarithmic one forms by with content would be by pullback with ra by rational maps, right? So if if your rational map contracts something to a point and is very degenerate there, when you pull back, it will have zeros there and does not have to have anything to the polar set of the, the logarithmic form when you pull back form. So have you tried to eliminate the content on these examples? So can you perform? By rational operations such that this uh, this content go goes to something of codimension two or higher. Uh, it's a great idea. I haven't thought about that, but uh, maybe we can talk after this. I haven't thought about this, but it sounds like a good idea to to get those irrational ideas here. Uh, thank you for the comment, but I haven't. <laughs> More questions? No? Okay, so we thank Mariano. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have the coffee break and we will resume the Congress at 4 p.m.